Well, welcome to the beginning of the school year in Mrs. Landon's math class. I want to give you a quick overview of how this course is going to work. Uh, we focus on what's called proficiency-based, personalized learning, by learning objective. Please make note the one thing I did not talk about is self-paced. This is not a self-paced course. This is a standard math course where the assumption is all students are at least on pace with the material. However, do note, this course is structured in such a way that you can pace ahead on your own if you want to move ahead in the course material. So being on pace or ahead of pace is the intention of this course. Now, in the presentation, I'm going to talk about four main things. I'm going to give you an overview of the spaces that we use for learning, the tools we use for learning, talk about the curriculum in terms of formative, which is going to be graded at 20%, and summative, which is graded at 80%, and then wrap up and showing you the learning cycle flow chart where you can see it all brought together on one page. My classroom consists of various flex spaces. Uh, you're going to notice different types of tables. We have your standard student desks down here. We have collaborative spots where there's some high top tables and bar stools, dining tables for students to sit at. I also have some side tables for students to sit at and some comfy spots to do their work. Do make note that during lecture time, students are expected to sit at the student tables or at the high top tables to stay focused. Here are a few snapshots of the actual room in action. Uh, when we are during our work time, students again will work together and you're going to see some collaboration going on. Or students may just choose to work by themselves over along the sides or in the tables. The comfy spots are a nice place to just to get comfortable and do some work. And don't worry parents, I do keep an eye on the students using the comfy spots during their work time to ensure they are doing their math. Now in addition to having flexing spaces within my classroom, we do have flexing spaces outside of the classroom. If students are ahead in their course material, I do allow them to flex out of the classroom into the student commons area or down below here into the media center. There may also be days where we have standard review, and at that time, if you are on track and on pace with your material, you may qualify to actually flex out of the classroom into these areas. Now, no matter which math course you're taking with me, the tools are going to be the same. I have a standard note packet for every chapter, which we have the templates of all the notes we're going to go through in lecture. I use Schoology to post all of my classroom notes and to have the daily homework assignments on here, in addition to various review assignments we may be doing. The calendar is a great spot to know what's going on. Uh, right here on the side, we have a weekly view of the calendar, or just click on the calendar, and you can scroll through month by month to see the daily assignments students are expected to do. Every chapter's curriculum is set up the same, no matter which math class. You'll find a resources folder, which has the note packets and miscellaneous information. You will then notice here that every folder is going to be a section. So from here, we go from section 1, 2, and if you follow the flow, we're going to go to the end of the sections, which is, in this case, for this class, Section 7. So if you look at the flow of this, this is exactly how I'm going to teach the material in this exact order. Um, in this particular class, we start and we do two sections of notes, and then we do a growth mindset activity, and then do a third section of notes. After that, this class has some ACT practice and some more multiple choice practice and an actual review worksheet to practice to get them ready for this formal quiz that's coming up. Once that cycle's over, we start over, we're going to do three more sections, and we have another formal quiz. This course, there's one last section, and they also have a project they're going to work on. Following that, we're going to have a chapter review by learning objective, some more multiple choice practice students can do, um, and then they're going to have a chapter test. On that day, students will also turn in their note packet, and I will grade it based on the quality of their notes. If this chapter did qualify for a test retake, all the relearning activities would be found in this folder. Let's talk about the daily learning and note taking. At the beginning of the chapter, students will always be given a note packet or they can actually use their own notebook if they prefer. I do recommend the note packet because the structure is there and I also have the daily homework written in there for students to have as a visual reference and to show their work on. When it comes time to take notes, students actually have three choices on how to take their notes. Students can sit through the typical class instruction or seminar as you see in most classes. However, I also have a second option. I have video notes posted for students, and you're going to see that right here. This is the video for Learning Objective 1.4a. Or if students prefer, they could actually read the textbook and take their own notes. Students will have a physical copy of the textbook if they would like. However, they can also find it right here within each of the section folders. In the past, the majority of students do tend to stick around for the class lecture or seminar, but do know there are other options available. 
Now after they take notes, they're gonna start their formative assessment. And notice right here, we have these green puzzle piece assignments. These are the formative assessments that students will use in Schoology after they take their notes. If you do feel like you're the type of learner that would like to reference the video notes, clearly you can reference them directly within the folder. However, please make note on YouTube I have particular playlists. If you're in Algebra 2, it's MWHS Algebra 2 or MWHS FST. I encourage you to go to YouTube and make a bookmark of the particular playlist so you can reference any of my videos at any point in time. The formative assessments are actually submitted online and are instantly graded for students. Um, however, keep in mind, I do recommend using the note packets because I have a paper version of these questions so students can have another spot to see them and a place to actually show their work. Students will have up to three chances to submit their answers on Schoology for grading when they do a green puzzle piece assignment. These are set at different proficiency levels to move on. It varies based on the course. As it stands right now, Algebra 2's proficiency is 60% or higher. FST is at 70% or higher. Most of these quizzes that students take right here are either going to be fill in the blank, matching, ordering questions, true and false, multiple choice, or possibly essay. There may also be times where students have to take a picture of their actual work they did on paper and upload it for me to grade. Keep in mind this is not a self-paced course. The assumption right here talking about in step three is assignments are really due the next day. That's when I will go over questions in class. The deadline for the assignments means the drop dead date I will give them full credit for that homework is going to be the day we have the first quiz or the test, whichever is first. Assignments not submitted by this day will earn a zero. Now if students are struggling in their submission and they get locked out after the third try, that's where they need to seek me for help and I can help them out and then I will unlock the quiz and let them try it one more time. One type of summative assessment I have is a quiz. And there's three different versions. There's a pre-quiz, a formal quiz, and a retake, which are all done by learning objective. Students will have the option at the beginning of their learning to take a pre-quiz. This is not required. If they show their proficiency on their paper quiz, then I will let them skip that particular learning objective that they were proficient on, and they do not have to take their notes or do the online homework we just discussed. After we do our learning for about three sections of work, students will have the formal quiz, where they will be tested on every single learning objective, even if they were able to skip it before. Keep in mind, all uncompleted formative assessments um, at this point in time for the formal quiz, if they are not done, get a zero and cannot be made up. Now the third quiz is a retake. If students want to retake any of the missed learning objectives from their formal quiz, they can. To do that, they first have to go back to any formative work in which they received a zero and do it all at an adequate level. If that work is all done, then they would do quiz corrections for the missed learning objectives. Keep in mind the deadline for the quiz retake is one day before either the chapter test or the next quiz, whichever is first, even if you were absent on prior days. So plan ahead. You will have an ample amount of time, but it's your responsibility to make sure that you meet this deadline. The other type of summative assessment is a chapter test. All chapter tests must be taken on the date in which they are assigned. Now the formal quizzes are retakeable, but so are the tests, as long as they don't fall at the end of the quarter. Now, in order to retake a test, all Schoology formative assessments must be adequately done. So if you never did them in the first place and got a zero, you have to go back and do those before you're even allowed to think about a retake. The next step then is to do some relearning tasks. Each student who wants to retake must meet with me individually and we will look at the tracker in terms of the learning objectives they missed in relation to the test. We will come up with their own plan on what type of relearning problems they must do. They will then be assigned particular problems to practice. They must do the work on a separate sheet of paper and check their solutions and seek me if there's help. They have to turn in this relearning work. This work must be adequately done. It can just not be copying the answers that are posted. If I look at the work and can tell it's not adequately done, you are not going to be allowed to retake this test. You must take the relearning work seriously in order to qualify to retake the test. Now keep in mind, when you do your retake, the new score that you get is earned even if you do worse on the second test. Now the window for retakes is two weeks from the day that the scores are initially posted into Skyward that all the relearning and the test itself must be retaken by. If you do not make this deadline, you cannot retake the test. 
which must be retaken during school hours by the deadline, even if you're absent for the days prior. This learning cycle flowchart right here brings together everything that I just said. There's seven steps, where in step one, students will take a pre-quiz if they choose to, to personalize their learning. Following that is step two, where they do the formal assessments and their note taking. And then there's summative assessment of their formal quiz. If there's any retaking of that formal quiz, they will get it taken within the appropriate window. Once all that learning is done, you go to step five to prepare for your test. Step six, let's take that test and get our note packet checked. And if the test is retakeable, then the retake itself would open up for the two week window. I hope you find this overview helpful. Please feel free to contact me with any questions or concerns that you have.